Hello, programmers. Dan McElroy with a discussion on how to create a graphical user interface project using either the Java Swing Library or Java FX Library. Here is an example of how the program works and the changes I want you to make. You can do the project either using the Java Swing GUI library or the Java FX GUI library. Code for either version of the project is at http colon slash slash program dash info dot net slash java with a capital J downloads slash java hello world. Swing is older. Java FX is newer and cooler but may take some extra work to implement it, especially with Eclipse. If you are planning a career in Java GUI apps, then I recommend learning Java FX. If you just want to get the project done so you can turn it in, then I recommend using the Java Swing library. When the program first starts up, it displays a message in the middle of the screen. If you click the Say Hello button, the message changes to Hello World. Clicking the Say Goodbye button changes the message to Goodbye. The app ends when the Quit button is clicked. I want you to make a couple of updates to the program. The first one is the easiest. Change the Hello World message to display your name. For example, Hello Dan! All you need to do to accomplish this task is to find the string Hello World in the program and change it to say your name. The second update is a little bit more complicated because it requires you to add a new button, success. When the button is clicked, the message on the screen changes to success. The Java Swing library and Java FX both provide a collection of controls that can be placed on a GUI application. They include several ways of organizing things on the form, labels to display text, areas to input or display text, radio buttons, checkboxes, buttons, and many others. For this small project, I will only be laying out a label control used to display the message and starting out with three buttons. You get to add the fourth button. Both GUI systems have something called the border layout. Swing calls the border layout areas north, south, east, west, and center. Java FX is really different. Java FX calls the areas top, bottom, right, left, and center. And just to be even more different, the label control used to display the message in the middle of the screen is called JLabel in Swing, and it is just called Label in FX. The controls for buttons are called J button and button respectively. At this point in the discussion, I will be going over the code for both the Swing and Java FX versions of the program. I realize there is a lot of detail here and it is nice to see how the program is constructed. However, for the lab assignment, you only need to find the places in the code to update your name in the hello message and add a button for success. Try not to get overwhelmed with too much information. TMI. We need to do two things to get these GUI apps to work. One, create the label and button controls and put them on the form. And two, write the event handlers to process an action event when the button is clicked. In this discussion, I am using several object-oriented programming terms that may be new to you, such as reference variables, class, object, instantiate, new operator, class level, default constructor, etc. As we continue to use these OOP terms, they will become more familiar to you. Let's look at the Java Swing program first. It starts off with the import statements needed to bring in the code for the Swing library. Reference variables are declared for the label and three button controls. A reference will hold the memory address of a variable or object, but does not provide a place in memory for the object itself. Objects are instantiated and given a place in memory only when the new operator is called, which is done a little later in the code. The reference for the label and buttons are placed in the class level outside of any subroutine method because they need to be accessed by more than one subroutine method. Main uses the new operator when it calls the default constructor 
Java Hello World Sling, open and close parentheses. The default constructor creates the frame in which is used to hold a message, label, and buttons. Objects placed in the root frame will be displayed on the screen when the program runs. The message subroutine method creates the JLabel for the message a little later in the program. A call to root.add open parentheses message open close parentheses comma border layout dot center calls the message subroutine method and places it in the center of the border layout. A call to root.add open parentheses buttons open close parentheses comma border layout dot south close parentheses semicolon calls the buttons subroutine method and places it in the bottom of the border layout. A little more code is used to set the size of the window, make it visible, and define what happens when the window is closed. In Swing, a J panel can be used to hold controls such as labels, buttons, etc. The panel is added to the J frame which becomes the window that is displayed. Private J panel message open close parentheses open curly brace declares a function named message that has a return data type of J panel. J panel message panel equals new J panel open close parentheses uses the new operator to instantiate a J panel object named message panel. I could have given it any name I wanted as long as I am consistent with that name within the block of curly braces. The layout is set to flow layout. LBL message equal new JLabel open close parentheses semicolon instantiates a JLabel object and places the address of the object in LBL message. Remember that LBL message was created at the top of the program as a reference and at the point did not have an address of an object yet. Now it does. The font name, style, and size are set for the LBL message and then the text to be displayed is set. The LBL message is added to the panel and the reference to the panel is returned so that it can be added to the J frame by the line of code root dot add open parentheses message open close parentheses comma border layout dot center close parentheses semicolon creating the buttons is similar to creating the J label except this time there are three buttons I named the J panel buttons panel created the three buttons and then added each button to the panel a reference to the panel is returned so that it can be added to the J frame by the line of code root.add buttons open close parentheses comma border layout dot south close parentheses semicolon we want something to happen when an event such as a button is clicked the code that gets executed when an event occurs is called an event handler if we look back at the top of the program where the class Java Hello World Swing is declared, we can also see that it includes the words Implements Action Listener. There is a lot of code that has already been written to process events. It includes a subroutine method named Action Performed that will be called when an event occurs. Instead of defaulting to Action Listener's Action Perform method, we want to define what happens when the buttons are clicked. The at sign override operator lets Java know that we are going to define and use our own version of action performed. When our version of action performed is called, it is passed a reference to the control object that caused the event. We can use several if else if statements to determine which control caused the event and do whatever we want. In this part of the code, Two of the buttons are setting the text for LBL message to something different, and the quit button is performing a system.exit. To summarize the things you need to do to add the success button, one, create a reference for the button at the top of the program. You can see where the references for the other buttons are created. Two, write the code that actually creates the button inside the function method private JPanel buttons, open close parentheses. Three, 
make sure that you add the new button to the button panel at the bottom of the buttons function subroutine. The buttons will show up on the screen in the order that they are added to the buttons panel. 4. Update the action performed function subroutine to process the button click for the event for the new button so that it changes LBL message to show success. 5. Don't forget to place your name in the event handler for the hello button. This concludes the discussion for the Java Swing version of the Hello World program. Now is the discussion for the Java FX version of the program. It starts off with a bunch of import statements that are used for Java FX. We can even see that the label control is spelled label with a capital L and the button is spelled button with a capital B. Main launches the application. The start method subroutine is where the application is built. It only takes two lines to build the label and each of the buttons, even including linking to the event handlers. Using the arrow in Java FX is called a Lambda token. Using Lambdas can save us a lot of the effort of coding a subroutine. See how easy it is to select and process an event handler for each of the buttons? An HBox is created and named Button Bar to hold the buttons. HBox stands for Horizontal Box. Controls placed in an HBox are laid out horizontally. And a border pane is created to hold them all. The text message is placed in the center pane and the button bar holding the buttons is placed in the bottom pane. The size of the scene is set when it is instantiated with the new operator. It is placed on the stage. The title is set for the top of the window and the stage is made visible. That's all there is to it when creating the app using Java FX. To summarize the things you need to do to add the success button, 1. Create the button with a couple of lines of code, including the action to be performed when the button is clicked. 2. Add the new button to the button bar in the order you want it to appear. 3. Change the event processing for the Hello button to include your name. I hope you enjoy this project. You can always use it as a starting point if you need to create a new Java GUI app. Bye for now.